Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three one pot meals. So these are basically just gonna be meals that we make in one pot. I'm actually making these for dinners, but these are definitely ones that you could make for lunch or for meal prep throughout the week. They are fairly low in calories and points. So I hope you'll stick with me. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christy and I'm planning us healthy. So as I said, if you're new here, my name is Christy and on my channel, I share weight loss related things. I do a lot of cooking videos. I do meal plans, meal preps, grocery hauls, all those type of videos. I also share the points for Weight Watchers and give calories as well. So I would love it if you would join our family and click that subscribe button. So let's get started with the first recipe. All right, tonight's dinner is one pot cheesy turkey taco chili mac. This is a skinny taste recipe and I saw this on a Facebook video and it looks delicious. Let me start by saying that this does have quite a few ingredients, but they're very easy ingredients. So the taco seasoning mix, you can actually use just a packet of taco seasoning if you prefer. This recipe calls for 1.3 pounds of ground turkey, the 93% lean. I only have one pound of that. So I'm actually gonna be just adding in some ground turkey breast. This is the zero point ground turkey breast but for the purposes of the points and calories I'm going to give you exactly according to what's on her recipe and also I will link her recipe down in the description box below so the points and calories on this are 341 calories and if you're counting points it's six points on blue and purple and eight points on green so the first thing I'm going to do is put the taco seasoning together so let's see it looks like a lot of one and a half so I'm gonna get my half measuring spoon out. And we need one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. One and a half teaspoons of cumin. We also need one teaspoon of kosher salt. One and a half teaspoons of chili powder. One and a half teaspoons of paprika. which is about going to do it for my paprika. And a half a teaspoon of oregano. And then just mix that up. All right, then we're gonna set that aside. So over here on my stove, I have a pot that's heating up. I have some cooking spray. I've used olive oil spray in there. You can use a Dutch oven or just a pot, whichever you prefer. So once that is heated a little bit, now just add the 1.3 pounds of turkey. And then I'm just gonna use a wooden spoon, just kind of break it apart a little. So I'm gonna leave that on medium heat and I'm gonna come back over here I'm gonna use a red pepper, a medium onion, and three garlic cloves. So I'm gonna chop the onion and the pepper and mince the garlic. Okay, once that is cooked through, now we're gonna add the pepper, onion, and garlic. And the taco seasoning mix. And then stir that up and let it cook for about two to three minutes. So the next thing I'm adding is a can of pink beans. So you can use pink or red beans drained. We also need one can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. You can use the Rotel brand. This is actually the Casa Mamita brand that is basically Aldi's version of Rotel. We also need eight ounces of tomato sauce. And we need half a can of fat-free refried beans. So this is a 16 ounce can, you need eight ounces. So just put half of the can in there. 
We also need 15 ounces of reduced sodium chicken broth. This is a 32 ounce container, so I'm gonna use just a little bit less than half. And finally, one and three quarters cups of water. And then just stir that up. Now we're just gonna bring this to a boil. And then once it's brought to a boil, I'm gonna cover it and simmer it for about 15 minutes. All right, once that comes to a boil, then give it a good stir. And now just put the lid on it and now I'm just gonna let it simmer for about 15 minutes. All right, once that has been simmering for about 15 minutes, now we're gonna uncover it. And now we're gonna add the noodles. I'm gonna stir it. And at this point, you can adjust the salt. If you need to add some salt, go ahead and do that now. And now we're gonna add eight ounces of pasta. So I'm using these shells and this is only seven ounces. So I took another bag and I weighed out one ounce so that I have eight ounces. All right, then stir that in and then you're just gonna simmer this over medium heat. We're gonna keep the top off now and then just cook it al dente. So probably about six minutes. Okay, this has been cooking now for about six minutes. So as you can see, it is thickening up and it smells so good. So now at this point it says to take it off the burner and add three quarters of a cup of part skim mozzarella cheese. So I had my cheese ready, but then I decided I'm gonna wait and just put the cheese on each serving. This actually makes eight servings. So we're actually gonna have this for lunch, and then I don't know if we're gonna have it for dinner or I may just freeze it. So rather than put the cheese on there now, I'm just gonna put it on our individual servings. So it calls for three quarters of a cup of cheese, three quarters of a cup, is 84 grams so if i divide that by eight i'm getting right around 10 grams per serving so i'll just measure out 10 grams of cheese on each serving so now i'm going to take this off the burner and i'm just going to let it sit for about five minutes and the only other thing i've done is cut up some green onion and some cilantro so if you want to put that on the top you can definitely do that my husband will definitely not have cilantro he is one of those ones who said cilantro tastes like soap as i know many of you say this same thing so let me know in the comments do you love cilantro or is it soap all right I'm trying to see if you can get a close-up look at this oh my gosh it smells delicious look at that does that not look so good so she says that one serving is one heaping cup I think that's perfect for lunch so for a lunch, it would be six points or 341 calories, did I say? Yes, 341. I think for dinner purposes, I need a little bit more than that. So I think for dinner, I would do like one and a half cups. And that way it's gonna be about nine points. And for calories, that's gonna put you up to, what, about 470 for calories. So that's still really low. It's still a dinner under 500 calories and under 10 points. So that's pretty much what I try to do for dinners is like 10, 10 points and 500 calories, just depending what it is. As long as it is well balanced, then that's good. So let me get these put into the bowls and get the toppings on and then we're gonna taste them and let you know because we have never tried this before. All right, so that's what it looks like for the one and a half cups. So that's a pretty good amount for dinner. And I have cilantro, green onion, and then the cheese on mine, and then on my husband's cheese and just green onion. So we're gonna try it now. Yeah, it's good, real good. It's hot. Yeah, it's really good. That is good. This is definitely one that I will make again, for sure. Let me pop back on just to say that my husband said he would prefer it a little bit more spicier. He would like to have like add more chili powder to his. For me, I like the sour cream. So if I only add 10 grams of sour cream, that's zero points. So it doesn't add any additional points. So definitely something that I will make again. 
All right, moving on to the next one pot meal. This is chicken marsala skillet. This is basically a one pot chicken marsala. The only difference is I do mine in the skillet, so that's why I call it skillet. If you prefer to use a Dutch oven or some other type of pot, that's fine. I am gonna be using just this big skillet. So the points and calories on this, 400 calories, and then four points for blue and purple, nine points for green. Now, one thing that I sometimes do is leave out the flour, and I think for today, I'm gonna leave the flour out. So normally where the flour comes in is with the chicken. Basically what you do is just pat the chicken dry, cut it into bite-sized pieces, and then season it with salt and pepper, and then place it all in bowl and mix it with flour. But a lot of times I'll just leave the flour out, and honestly, I really don't taste a difference. So point-wise, it's the same because it's not much, it's only one point worth of flour, and this is making enough for two. But if you're counting calories, it will save you 28 calories for each serving. So for me this time, I'm just gonna leave it out. So for this one, I actually have my dinner kit already. If you're new to my channel, on Sundays when I do my meal preps, I meal prep breakfast and lunch, and then I also do my own dinner kits, which is basically where I'm just taking the ingredients and putting them in a bag, and it just gets them ready for the day that I make them. So in this bag, I have two, these are like five ounce portions of chicken, but the recipe does call for 13 ounces, so you could use six ounce, whatever you want. If you're following the WW plan, you're on blue or purple your chicken breast is zero points anyway so the rest of the items we're going to need are two teaspoons of chicken base which is basically better than bouillon it's just you buy it this way this makes really good gravies or i use it in a lot of different recipes and then we also need a shallot we also need two garlic cloves and then down in there, I have about six ounces of broccoli. I'm gonna be washing that in a minute. So when I do my meal kits, I don't wash everything. I just put them in the bag and wash them the day that I have it. And then the other things I'm gonna need are four ounces of fat-free half and half. I also have three ounces of Marsala wine. Anytime that you cook with alcohol, it does burn out, but if you are not comfortable cooking with alcohol, you prefer not to for whatever reason, that's perfectly fine. What you could do in this situation for this one is there are actual cooking wines that you can purchase. I think they're like in the aisle at the store, like with vinegars and that type of things. And there is a Marsala cooking wine, which has no alcohol in it. So that's an option. The other thing we are gonna need is two tablespoons of water. And over here I have, it calls for six ounces of mushrooms. This container I have is actually eight ounces, so I'm just gonna use the whole thing. And then about two ounces of peas, which I just weighed out two ounces. I have the peas actually in a container in my freezer. So those we don't add until the end, so I'm gonna leave those in my freezer for now. All right, so I'm just gonna open my chicken and just put it on a paper towel. And that is gonna be cut into bite-sized pieces. And I'm just gonna dry that off and I'm gonna put some salt and pepper on it. So now I'm just gonna take the chicken and cut it into bite-sized pieces. All right, so now I'm gonna set that chicken aside, get my hands washed, and the next thing I'm gonna do is wash all my produce. And then I'm gonna cut the broccoli up into bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna chop up the mushrooms and mince the shallot and the garlic. Okay, so I've got my pan heated, and now I'm just gonna add some cooking spray. And I'm using olive oil in mine. And now I'm gonna add in my chicken. You could actually get this started before you cut up your vegetables. So now I'm just gonna let this cook for about three to four minutes on each side. In the meantime, one thing I'm doing different, I'm just gonna toss this in the microwave. I've got a little bit of water in the bottom. I'm gonna cover it with a paper towel and put it in the microwave for about five minutes. All right, after that's been searing, now I'm just gonna put it back into my strainer that I had the broccoli in. We're just gonna set that aside and then give it another spray with cooking spray. 
And my Misto is not spraying properly again. And now we're gonna add the mushrooms and the shallot. And then just let those saute for between two to four minutes till they get kind of browned. And you just wanna stir it up occasionally. And you still want your heat on medium high heat because you wanna pull that moisture out of the mushrooms. Okay, so the, after that's been cooking for two to four minutes, now just add the garlic and we're just gonna let this cook until fragrant, so only about 30 seconds. All right, next we're gonna add the three ounces of Marsala wine. And then we're just gonna stir this occasionally and just keep cooking it until the wine is pretty much fully evaporated. So just a couple minutes. Okay, after that is pretty much evaporated, now we're gonna add in the half and half. I'm just gonna stir it in slowly. And my burner at this point is still on medium high. Then you're gonna add the broccoli, which I am scooping mine out because I still have a little bit of water in the bottom of this bowl that I don't wanna put in there. And then our two tablespoons of water. And then the chicken base. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna add my chicken back to the pan. So now I've turned my burner down. I'm gonna simmer this. I have my burner down about a little less than medium. I'm gonna let this come to a simmer and just stir it occasionally for probably about six minutes just until the sauce is thickened and the chicken is completely cooked. So after that's been simmering, now we're just gonna add in the two ounces of peas. And then just stir those around. So as you can see, this comes out pretty thick. So with the flour, the flour really kind of just thickens it, but honestly, I feel like it comes out thick enough. So that's why sometimes I just leave the flour out. All right, now just let that sit for about a minute so the peas can cook up a little more. All right, now after it's been sitting about a minute, now just split it in half and put it into two bowls or plates, whatever you want to use. And that is the one pot chicken marsala, or one skillet, whatever you want to call it. And I've had this one before, so I already know it's really good. That is so good. All right, the final recipe we're gonna be making is a recipe I got from theskinnyishdish.com. This is one pot bacon cheeseburger pasta. And let me tell you, this looks and sounds so good. I've not had this one before, so I will be trying it at the end, let you know what I think. For this one, it is, the serving size is about one and a half cups. This does make enough for six. And the points on this are eight on all programs and 329 calories. Items we're gonna need for this one one medium onion that we're gonna chop up, six slices of chopped center cut bacon, one pound of extra lean ground beef, so I've got the 96% lean, two teaspoons of Lowry's season salt, three tablespoons of dill relish. We're also gonna need a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes and one and a half cups of beef broth. Also one cup of water, eight ounces of pasta. If you remember from the first recipe I did, I used these pasta shells. So I needed eight ounces for that recipe. And so I took an ounce out of this. So I only have six ounces of pasta. I'm not gonna worry about the other two ounces. I'm just gonna make this in it. I'm thinking it won't make too much of a difference, but for recipe purposes, it is eight ounces of pasta. Also three quarters of a cup of mozzarella cheese, a half a cup 
of fat-free half and half, one quarter cup of no sugar added ketchup, two tablespoons of yellow mustard, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and some salt and pepper. Now that seems like a lot of ingredients, but once you get the bacon and the onion cut up, it is very easy, just throw everything in the pan. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my six slices of bacon cut up and cooking in the pan. I have my pan over here on the stove heated, heating up. You need to have either a deep skillet or a pot. So I'm gonna use a deep skillet. You also wanna make sure you have a lid that fits that since we're gonna be cooking pasta in it. So here I have six slices of center cut bacon and one red onion. I'm gonna cut the center cut bacon into small pieces, toss it in my pan. I'm not gonna be putting any oil in the pan since it's bacon, it's gonna create its own fat. And then I'm gonna cut up my red onion. Okay, after the onion is cut up, then just add the onion to the bacon. And then we're just gonna cook this until the bacon is cooked and the onion is soft and translucent. Next thing we're gonna do is add in the ground beef. And just break it apart. So one thing she says at this point, before adding the ground beef, if you wanted to take the onion and bacon out so that it would stay a little bit crispy, you could do that and then add it back in at the end. But she said she just leaves it in there just so that it can kind of get all the flavors together. So that's what I'm gonna do. I figure if you wanted to at the end, you could add either some extra points by adding bacon at the end, or if you wanna add a tablespoon of bacon bits, those are zero points just for the tablespoon. If you have more than a tablespoon, it becomes points. All right, once that's all broke apart, now we're gonna add in the two teaspoons of seasoning salt. And then we're just gonna keep cooking this until the burger is cooked through. All right, once that's cooked, then the next thing to do is if you have grease that needs to be drained, go ahead and drain that. I really don't have anything. Mine kind of evaporated into it. So now we're gonna add in the 14.5 ounce can of tomatoes and also the dill relish. And then just stir that right into the burger. I'm a little bit worried that my pan is not going to be big enough. It's definitely deep enough, but I don't think it's big enough around. Okay, now we're going to add the pasta, and this is why I don't feel like my pan is big enough. So I'm going to add, I have six ounces here, and also in my pantry I found some more noodles. So this is actually two ounces. Sometimes I'll do that. I will make a recipe and I use exactly what it calls for and then I end up with some extra noodles. So I weighed this out. This is two ounces. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this to it. And then we're also gonna add in one and a half cups of the beef broth. the one cup of water and a pinch of salt which my salt is about done and then we're going to very carefully <laughs> stir that up so i've got that over high heat i'm going to bring that to a boil which it's actually already starting once it comes to a boil i'm going to reduce the heat cover and simmer for about 12 minutes all right, we've got it to a boil. So now I'm gonna reduce the heat and I'm gonna cover and let it simmer for 12 minutes. All right, now just give that another stir. 
So now we're just gonna add in the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna stir in the mozzarella. And the half and half. Oh my gosh. Tell me this does not look so good. I think I'm gonna use a regular spoon. I think a spoon would be a little bit easier to stir that up. Then we're gonna add in the Worcestershire and the ketchup and mustard. Now I'm gonna turn my heat up to medium high and just give that a good stir. So I'm just gonna stir this constantly for two to three minutes until the sauce is thickened. So after a couple minutes, now I've shut my burner off. I'm gonna actually set this aside just for a couple minutes and just kind of let it sit and then I'm gonna dish it up. So like I said, this makes six servings and she says it's about one and a half cup servings. All right, that is what it looks like plated up. So that is one and a half cups. That this is, you can see like how deep this bowl is. That is a pretty good portion. Honestly, I don't even know that I could eat that much. So one thing she says is you could add toppings. So if you want at this point to add some more onion, some dill pickles, if you want to add more cheese and more bacon, go ahead and do that. Make sure to account for any points. So I did just put a splash of cheese, basically more for the picture that I wanted to take, but I added a tablespoon of bacon bits. So that's zero. So now I'm going to try this. Oh my gosh, that tastes like a cheeseburger. <laughs> wow, that dill relish really stands out in this. That is so good. I didn't expect the dill relish to stand out so much. That's really what gives it kind of that cheeseburger flavor. That is really good. And it turned out not to be too bad using the skillet. So I think I would still use that rather than a bigger pot, but you can see how much is left. Like that one serving didn't even do a dent. Definitely will make this again. So worth the eight points. I was a little bit worried. I thought I would need to do like one and a half servings, but this is plenty. So this one is definitely a hit. I'll definitely be making this one again. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. That is it for my One Pop Meals video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you in my next video. I'm Christy and I'm planning us healthy.